guys and welcome to another one of my lipstick declutters. If you've missed any of my previous videos, I will link that declutter playlist down below, but we've gone through a whole slew of nudes. We've done mauves, pinks, oranges, corals, grayges, and all sorts of shades in between. We have two more sort of mini collections left to look at. Today we're going to be looking at oranges and reds, and then I've got some rust colored shades that are in here as well. And then my last video will be doing sort of my berry tone and more vampy shades in my collection. So two videos left and then at the very end we'll be doing a declutter sort of a roundup to talk about all the things that I've kept, all the things I've decluttered, show you my makeup storage as it looks now, I'll do some before and afters etc. So let's go ahead and do what we've done in the past and lay all these out by color family and then we will get to swatching. All right, so what you're seeing here is all of my sort of true red shades. There's some that are a little deeper, a little brighter, but a lot of these have that really pretty bluish undertone to them. They're less orangey, more true red. I'm gonna set these liquid lipsticks to the side just to make more room for these here as we swatch. All right, up first, this is from Flower Beauty. This is the shade Wild Azalea. This is uh, one of her matte lipsticks, and this is a true blue-based red. This is the point of my declutters where my arm will start to get super stained. Uh, so anyway, there is Wild Azalea. I do really like this formula. This down, because I'm kind of curious how this swatches next to Ruby Woo. So this is from MAC, very famous shade Ruby Woo. This is part of their Retro Matte line, which means it's the most drying, so it definitely has the most tug on your lips. Hope you can see that there. Ruby Woo is just a smidge lighter than the um, Wild Azalea shade. These next two are from Lisa Eldridge. These are part of her red collection that she launched last fall. Um, she just recently restocked these. I don't know as I get to post these out whether or not these will be back in stock, but this is the shade Wild Jazz. It is a beautiful, beautiful formula. Um, she's done this like velveteen on the outside of it. It literally looks like velvet on the outside of these lipsticks. It's absolutely incredible. I don't feel like I was just able to do these justice by any stretch of the imagination. So this is the shade Velvet Jazz, which is a deeper uh, red toned, definitely more of that deep 20s sort of vibe to it. I think that's the, thus the name Velvet Jazz. I really do like her formulas though. They are matte, but they are comfortable. They go on the lips really smoothly. I, I've really been impressed with them. And then the other shade I picked up was Velvet Ribbon, which was more of a traditional red. And that undertone wise is very, very similar to uh, Ruby Woo. In fact, as I look at both of these, that is almost the exact same shade. This is really pretty. It's from Bessemer and the Snow White collection. This is Snow White Red. This is an exact match to the red lipstick that they used on Snow White, uh, the cartoon movie back in the day. That is a swatch there um, uh, from Besame Snow White Red. I will say it does look very, very similar to these two. Um, maybe a little more similar to Wild Azalea um, at the very beginning there from Flower Beauty. A little bit more depth than these two um, here. Um, this is Red Carpet Red from Charlotte Tilbury. This is one of her matte lipsticks. Um, this one is very, very easy to wear, and once again, very similar shade to, I would say, both Wild Azalea and the Snow White Red. Up next, this is from NYX. This is one of their matte lipsticks in Alabama. I think I had a couple of you guys uh, recommend this shade to me. It's a little deeper and a little browner than I think some of the other reds that we've talked about on here. So it definitely has more of a brownish undertone to it. This is from NARS. This is the shade Cruella. And this is part of their Velvet Matte Lip Pencils. That's got a little bit more depth than a lot of the ones we've pulled up so far. Um, this is from NYX. It's a full throttle lipstick in the shade Firestorm. And that really does remind me a lot of some of those earlier reds that we swatched um, from like Ruby Woo and the, what is that, Velvet Passion from Lisa Eldridge. That's a very similar shade. And then last traditional lipstick is Frenchie. This is a matte lipstick from ColourPop. And this one is definitely a lot brighter. Yeah, so you can definitely see this looks a lot brighter even on um, 
my arm than it's looking on the viewfinder right now. In fact, I may have to try and edit this a little bit in um, post just to try and brighten that up a little bit. So I definitely feel like I've got more reds than I need here. I definitely feel like I want to pass some on and just keep a few. So let's think about this. All right, so here is what I've decided. These first two, um, Wild Azalea from Flower Beauty, as well as Mac Ruby Woo, I feel like I've got other uh, formulas uh, down here that are very similar to those two shades. So I definitely feel like I can pass on those and I won't miss them. I am keeping the next two shades here. I'm keeping Velvet Jazz and then Velvet Ribbon from the Lisa Eldridge collection. I think those are absolutely beautiful and I love the packaging on them. I am loath to pass this Snow White shade on just because I love the backstory of it, but I also feel like this matches a lot of the reds that I just told myself that I was keeping, including the one from um, Lisa Eldridge. So I think I'm gonna pass this on to my sister. I think she will really appreciate this. She wears red lipstick beautifully and she has very Snow White skin. So I think this would be a fun one to pass on to her. So I am going to go ahead and keep Red Carpet Red. It's a little bit more of a satin texture. These two from Lisa Eldridge are definitely more matte. They feel very creamy, but they definitely are more matte. This is a little bit more sheen to it, um, and I really enjoy this shade from Charlotte Tilbury. I am going to go ahead and pass on the shade Alabama. I do think this is really beautiful, and I do think it is a really close dupe to Velvet Jazz from Lisa Eldridge. I'm also going to pass on this NARS shade and Cruella. I don't really feel like I'm reaching for this. If I'm going to go Vampy Red, I can easily go for one of these and not miss this guy. And then this full throttle lipstick from NYX is definitely very similar to the shades that I've kept, so I'm going to pass that on. I am going to go ahead and keep this ColourPop lippy stick in French because I do feel like this is very neon red is really cool and it's definitely different than anything else that I have on my arm right now. All right, as predicted, my arm is starting to stain. We will just have to plow through it. Of course, I have a work trip tomorrow. I'm gonna have this like awesomely stained lip swatch arm. I'm gonna have to really figure out how I get that off. Regardless, let's go ahead and swatch what are liquid or liquefied lipsticks in my collection. Um, if I can, let's put this here. Um, first up, this is a Water Kiss um, lips color, glossy lip color from Essence. I kept the more purpley toned one earlier in my collection because it was kind of more like a, a watery stain, and I thought this one was really pretty as well, but it has a little bit more pigmentation to it, and I kind of wish it was a little more sheer and a little more watery like the purple shade I kept. Um, it is a really pretty color, but I don't know as if it's going to warrant keeping. This is the shade Impossible Red from NARS Velvet Lip Glides. I think this was limited edition. It might still be available on NARS's website, but it's definitely almost that neon-y type red. It's a really comfortable formula, slightly glossy to begin with, and then sets down to a more satin matte texture. This is the Physicians Forming a Healthy Lip in Tulip Treatment. This is more of a whipped texture. It it is a very comfortable liquid lipstick from the drugstore. I do really like a this formula uh, in terms of a liquid lipstick. This is from Ofra. This is old packaging. This is Atlantic City. This is an absolutely beautiful red. I love how this looks, but I feel like this one is getting a little bit old and I'm not sure I'm going to hang on to it. We'll have to see. Let's see if it smells funny. Yeah, I feel like the smell might be starting to go off a little bit on that. Uh, this is from Maybelline. This is the Superstay Matte Ink. This is the shade Pioneer. This is definitely incredibly tenacious. It's a little darker than some of the ones we were looking at earlier as well, um, but it definitely has a bit of a raspberry pink undertone to it. I don't know if you can see that there. It not only lasts well, but it stays, it stains, excuse me, as well. This is an old lipstick from Fiona Styles in the shade Cherry Street. This was part of her Ultra Suede High Intensity Lip Colors. I really liked this formula. I liked a lot of products from Fiona Styles, to be very honest, and I'm a little bummed that they didn't make it in Ulta because I felt like the line was just, had put out some really good quality products. And this is a true cherry red, and I'm hoping you can see the difference 
on camera between something that's more of a raspberry red and then something that's more of a true, true red. I think I'm gonna pass this water kiss on. I don't feel like, I feel like these first three shades are all very, very similar. So I don't feel like I need to hang on to this. I wish it was a little bit more watery and a little thinner formula because then I think I would have kept it almost like a popsicle type stain. These next two shades are super similar. This one's glossier and this one is more of a matte lip. I'm torn because I really like both of these. I feel like I still want to keep both of these. No, neither one of these has gone off. Um, I can, I'm not going to be repurchasing NARS when I've obviously used these up and or um, they've gone off. So I do think I want to keep both of these. I just, I really like this glossy formula, even though these colors are very, very similar to one another. There are just times where I want a more comfortable glossy lip. And this is one that I can shear out very easily. This is just too pigmented. I don't find these very easy to shear. They're just full opacity mattes. So I do think I'm going to keep both of those. This O for one, I definitely feel like it's got to go. It's a little, um, it's just gone off and the formula has changed and the smell has as well. This sort of raspberry red from Maybelline. This is definitely one of those reds where it's like, I want to wear a red lip. I really want it to last. I, I trust this to like make it through a steak dinner at a fancy restaurant kind of red um, or kind of formula. So I do think I'm gonna go ahead and keep this. And then I'm really torn on this one because I really like this red, but I feel like this formula is just, it's years old at this point. So I feel like I've got to pass it on. I just feel like kind of like that over one. I've had it in my collection for so long that I'm a little nervous to put it on my mouth and consume it, which is what happens when you put lip products in your mouth. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and pass this guy on. All right, so here are my true oranges and orange red shades. I've got a couple lipsticks and a couple of liquid lipsticks here. Let's just swatch all of these. This is the shade Tell Laura from Charlotte Tilbury. It's just a really awesome sort of orangey tomato red color. This is an interesting shade. It's called Wildfire. It's a metalized shade in the Urban Decay Vice lipsticks. I guess I probably could have put this in my rust section to be honest, but it's like an orange that has a gold shift to it, but it's a little less intense than some of than the orange we just swatched there. This is from Bite. This is Clementine. It is a matte cream crayon. I feel like these are super old, but I don't they don't make the shade anymore and it's definitely been one of my favorite orange reds. It's just a little brighter and a little less deep than the Charlotte Tilbury shade, um, which is why I have preferred this one. It still smells okay. It doesn't smell like it's gone off. It still smells like their normal bite um, pink lemonade scent. Then we've got two liquid lipsticks here. One is a ultra satin lip in the shade Cozy from ColourPop, which is very similar to that um, Charlotte Tilbury shade, just in a liquid lipstick formula. And then finally, Maybelline Superstay Matte Ink in the shade Heroin. Um, and this one is a little bit of a brighter orange, if I recall. Yeah, it's definitely more of that like fiery, almost, gosh, I wonder, how does that compare to like tulip treatment I just kept? They look different on the container, but this is a very neon-y color as well. So it's a little deeper and a little less neon. How does that compare against the ColourPop shade? Gosh, that really is vibrant and neon. Of course, the camera can't possibly pick these shades up. I'm just swatching these because I want to make sure I'm not like keeping something that's starting to look similar. Mm, that looks a little bit more similar. All right, just swatching some things that I've already kept. All right, so let's do this. Charlotte Tilbury Tell Laura. I absolutely love this formula. I love the shade, want to keep it. I think I can pass on this one. I know it's different than what's on my arm, but I just haven't been reaching for it. I'm going for an orangey lip. I'm probably going more bold than these, or I'm going into that more rust family, which we'll talk about in a non-metalized formula. So I'm gonna pass on that. I also just feel like it's time to pass on this bite crayon. I've had it forever. I've gotten great use out of it. This thing is ancient. I don't feel like it's gone off yet, but I feel like I've got the Charlotte Tilbury shade. I wish it was a little lighter. I wish the Charlotte Tilbury shade was a little lighter like this bite crayon, but I can pass this on and not miss it. And then as it relates to these last two, I think I'm gonna pass on this Maybelline shade. It's just a little more neon. I wish it was more true to the color of the outside of this. 
Instead, because I do want to keep a liquid lipstick sort of orangey color, I think I'm going to keep this one from ColourPop. I'm going to call it a day for my orangey reds. All right, so here are more of the orangey slash rust colors. I could have put these in vampy, but I didn't feel like all of them were dark. And I definitely feel like they're orange brown leaning. So I just, I don't know, to me, this made most sense to put them in here. Um, this is the shade Brick from e.l.f. This is one of their, I think, moisturizing lipsticks. Oh no, this is one of their matte lipsticks. So this is like a orangey brown, it's like a brownish brick red. Um, it's a really cool color. And I actually do like the matte form formula in these little elf ones. They're super affordable. That's a really nice sort of rusty brown red shade for fall. This is from ColourPop. This is called 21 Questions. This is one of their velvet blur lipsticks. So this is one of those ones that's going to kind of, it's going to be a little bit thinner of a formula and it's meant to be kind of sheared out a little bit on the lips. Um, so it kind of gives that blurred effect. I like this formula, but I don't know as if it's my favorite formula on the market. Uh, one color that I know I really do like, this is e.l.f. Catwalk Orange in their matte uh, little lip crayons. Um, this one is actually probably gonna be very similar, sure is. It's very similar to that um, ColourPop shade we just kept. It's just a little bit more, in t a little more pigmented, but I wanna say you could probably blur this out and get a similar sort of stained effect. Now we move into some liquid lipsticks. So this is new to my collection. This is from Ofra. This is Las Ole, maybe? Las Olas. I feel like it's Las Ole. Anyway, it's uh, one that came in the Samantha March lip bundle. I have tried this on my lips once, but I have not worn it yet. I feel like this is a very, at least on my skin tone, it's a very warm brown. So I'm curious to see as I go into fall or I'm doing some more golden eye looks, how a warm brown would look on me. Typically, these very warm yellowy browns are not the most flattering on a cool undertone, uh, but I wanna give that one a true test. And then this is the shade Clementine. Yes, Clementine from M Cosmetics. This is one of the most interesting rusty orange shades. I, I just feel like this is pumpkin spice latte in a container. And this more orangey undertone, I don't know, in the fall is just, I don't know, it's gorgeous. It really is unlike any other shade that I have ever put on my lips. And I love this Infinite Lip Cloud formula. I feel like it's so moussey and comfortable and long wearing. And then this is from Maybelline. This is the shade Globetrotter in their Superstay Matte Ink. So this is definitely one of those shades that is gonna be bulletproof. And this one is a little redder and rustier than the Ofra Cosmetics one down below. So you can see it's just got a little bit more red to it and a little less brown. It's a little lighter as well. So the obvious two similarities on my arm are between e.l.f. and ColourPop. I actually think I'm gonna keep the e.l.f. one because I feel like I can get full pigmentation, a little bit of a it's kind of a matte satin hybrid. I wouldn't say this is the most matte lipstick of life, but I can definitely sheer it out and get that sort of velvet blur texture. This formula is interesting, and I think I have a friend who might really enjoy trying this. So I think I'm gonna pass that on to her. I do wanna swatch the Velvet Jazz shade next to this, because I kept Velvet Jazz, which was a deeper red, and it was more, I'm wondering how close it is. Oh yeah, see that's way different. That is the difference between those two. One is more berry and one is definitely more brown. You know what, I do think I wanna keep that e.l.f. shade. I like the formula and I think it's a really unique color. I'm keeping the Ofra one just cause I wanna play around with it. I'm keeping the M Cosmetics one because it's just totally unique and different. Um, I do feel like I'm gonna pass this guy on though because I feel like I have got this sort of orange brown thing here and I feel like one of these shades will probably work for me and I don't need to keep a third. I'm really not reaching for this type of color a ton and it remains to be seen how I feel about this Oprah one. I know I like the M Cosmetics one. It really is fun in the fall. So I think I 
feel comfortable passing this on. And that kind of wraps this up for the rusts. All right, guys, so here is what I'm getting rid of and here is what I'm keeping. I feel like I've got a couple things in my keep pile that may work their way out as we get through a fall season or I get more playtime with them, but I feel like I've got my bases covered in terms of red undertones and then some fun sort of rusty brown shades. I've gotten rid of any duplicates or things that are a little bit older. So I've actually um, gotten rid of 13 and I've kept 13. So that is 50% of my collection, but I feel like I've balanced out uh, some of the shades, especially some of these classic reds where I had 15 of them at the beginning of this declutter. And now we're down to seven and that feels still maybe a little too high, but I feel like I've got a couple different formulas that I wanna keep. So that wraps us up for today's video, a little bit of a shorter declutter. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. We will be moving on to the final category, sort of vampy plum berry looks next, and then we will wrap everything up. Talk to you soon, bye.